are six different types of constructors in chess, and we're going to discuss all of those. So the first one up here is isolated pawn. So we can see that the pawn on d4 is isolated. It's not defended by any other pawns. There are no other white pawns next to that pawn. There are the rook on d1, which is defending that pawn. And there is a knight, which is defending. Other than that, there's no pawns next to this. Yeah. I always mention that uh, whenever we get isolated pawns, we should always try to attack and keep the queens on the board and keep the bishops because we definitely focus more on like checkmating ideas, uh, attacking ideas, and when we get isolated pawns. And the opposite, whenever we are playing against the isolated pawn, we should always try to change as many pieces as possible. So in the end, it will be really, really tough to defend the pawn on, on d4 right now. Isolated. Next one is so all the way up here we can see that that pawn on d6 is backward pawn compared to any other pawns right now. So that pawn cannot be advanced forward. Well, legally it can, but it will be captured either by this pawn on c4 or by the other on e4. Or we have like a pattern of two rooks, which are controlling d5 and so on. So um, in other ways, it will be quite hard to defend the pawn. So we could do king f8 and king e7 with like more uh, defense. But other than that, it's really hard to play on the, that black side right now because we would always have to think about how we should defend the pawn on g6 and how we should keep it like fine right now. So the other one is double pawns. So in position, both white and black has double pawns. As we can see up here, pawn on f2 and f3 are doubled, as well as pawn c7 and c6 are doubled as well. What's so special about double pawns? Well, double pawns, definitely it's easier to attack double pawns, and um, those pawns are not giving support to the other pawn. So we are basically like blocking. So that pawn on f3 is blocking that pawn on f2 up here. This pawn up here. The same as pawn on c6, blocking this pawn on c7, which makes it really challenging to move forward on that pawn on c c7 and f2. Those pawns are really struggling at the moment. It's also quite nice for white because white could just to c5 and to c6 within the two moves. And uh, since the black king is quite far away in that position, it would take them at least three moves to get close to that pawn, which would be not possible to defend. Now, next pawn is fast pawn. So that's my favorite. Game. So, what happens when we get this pawn? Yeah, we try to promote it. So, we just need to calculate that the king is not able to stop it. And as for here, we can see that it would take them one, two, three, four, five, six moves to get to b7 and stop that pawn. And just unreal for the moment. Uh, just that pawn. And for white, we can also calculate a total of one, two, three, four moves just to get all the way to eight and promote the queen. So here up here is I um spawn up here, and like whenever you get a spawn, you should always be um and I always say again for the end game part, that's the king, and you know it's all about the king, and you always want to advance your king unless you have the fast one. And if you see that you can promote your fast one, you shouldn't worry about your king. If you see that you have trouble to promote, then always try to advance your king and bring it as close as possible so you'll be able to promote that pawn. Uh, connected pawn. So now up here, black did an extremely nice job. So we can see that their pawn structure is amazing, all of the pawns are. Quite nicely placed, connected. There are no double pawns, no isolated pawns, except of this pawn on g6. I should mention that pawn is the pawn in the moment compared to the rest of the pawn structure. That's the major thing here. Now, if you look at the white pawn structure, we got all type of different pawns. We got double pawns up here. Again, a pawn on each is really struggling. There's isolated pawn on e4. There's also connected pawns on c4 and b5, which we have to be careful about because uh, if we use our king, uh, let's say with my king f5, king f2, and king f4, then that pawn will be just promoted nicely. b6, b7, b8, and the pawn would be unstoppable. So yeah, we do have to be careful to block that pawn and uh, just to think about advancing like the rest of our pawns, probably like g, G6 and uh, F5 would be a really nice idea just to use our resources and try to move forward. So, uh, 
The last one is advanced points. Up here we can see that that pawn on c7 is advanced. Okay, it's one of my favorite as well. So when the pawn gets all the way to the other side of the board, to the seven or or the second rank, like we call it advanced pawn. And this pawn is really nicely placed right now. We just moved bishop b7. We are trying to get through the uh, to get rid of that rook on c8 so the rook would move to e which is gonna promote up here you know if rook takes quite happy we just win the free rook so the best actual scenario for black is just to keep that rook for the moment up here just to keep blocking it so if let's say they would do some seven move trying to bring the king closer we would be happy just to get the exchange but at least we in some kind of material and our pawn is still up here and definitely we still can uh, keep the idea in mind that we can take on b5 and get the rook all the way to b8 and challenge that rook on c8 trying to promote the new queen.